Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. Here we're going to solve what we're going to call multi-step equations. And it's a really important concept. So what we've learned before is how to solve single-step equations, where all you had to do was add or subtract, or all you had to do was multiply or divide to get the answer. And now we're going to have some equations where you have, may have to do both. You may have to do add and then divide, or you may have to subtract and then multiply or something like that. And it's, they're not hard, it's just we're building on the skills that we've learned before. So for instance, if you have the equation 2x minus 1 is equal to 11. Now this one's a little bit different than what we've seen before because notice that we have multiplication going on here. But we also have some subtraction. But the goal is the same as it is in all of the other lessons. We want to get x by himself. And you have to view this as a puzzle or maybe a Christmas present. You have to unwrap it. And even though you really want to get to x really, really bad and get the answer, you can't just jump straight to the answer. You have to do it in steps. You have to work and look at the big picture first, getting closer and closer and closer to my goal. So looking at the big picture, the negative 1 is the big picture. He's farthest away from x. I'm going to get rid of him first. I can't jump straight to the division here because he's closely tied in with the x and I need to, to kind of work my way closer and closer to x as I go. So first I'm going to deal with the uh, subtraction here and the opposite of subtraction is addition. So this equation is just like any equation. I'm going to add the same number to both sides. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. The reason I did that is because I'm, this makes this go away. It makes him be equal to 0. So on the left, all I have is 2x, and on the right, I have 12. Now I'm in a position where this equation looks exactly like what we were doing just recently. 2 times x is equal to 12. How do I get rid of this uh, 2 that's in front of here? The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'll just make it and divide it by 2, just like that. And then the 2 on the top will cancel with the 2 on the bottom or divide out giving me 1, and all I really have left on the left side of the equation is x, and on the right hand side, what is 12 divided by 2? That is 6. That is the answer. Again, you're just trying to zero in and get x by himself. So first we tackle the negative 1, get rid of him, then we tackle the 2 that's in front and get rid of him, and we end up with 6. If you stick this in here, 2 times 6 is 12, 12 minus 1, gives you 11. So this is a valid solution, is the only valid solution for this equation. Okay, so we're just going to do more problems like this. They're going to seem very uh, similar after a while. That's okay. There's no trick questions here. I'm giving you lots and lots of problems so that you can get practice, so that you'll be confident in what you're doing. So the next problem we have is 4x plus 9 is equal to negative 3. And if you think you know how to solve this, stop the video now and do it yourself. And then you'll get that confidence to check your work with me and make sure that you're doing it right. So again, I've got multiplication and addition going on. I really want to get x by himself, but I can't jump to the end. It's like reading a book. You can't skip to the end. you got to do the big picture first. In this case, it's going to be the 9 there. So that means that I'm going to subtract 9. So 4x plus 9 minus 9 is equal to negative 3 minus 9. So I just subtracted 9 from both sides. That means this is going to go to 0. On the left, I'm going to have 4x. And on the right, I have negative 3 minus 9. And we've done this enough. That's, you should know that that's negative 12. Because when you have a negative and you subtract, you make it more deeply negative. So you end up basically adding the 3 and the 9. And the answer is negative. So now this problem looks like what we've done in the past. To get rid of the 4, since it's multiplied, we divide both sides of the equation by 4. And what that does is this 4 will cancel with this one. And so on the left, all I have is x. And on the right, what is 12? Negative 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And since they're opposite signs, it's going to be negative. So negative 3, that's the final answer. To check your work, stick it back into this value here. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 9 is indeed negative 3, and I think you can convince yourself of that. All right, so we're going to cruise on down and do our next problem, uh, which will be 1 half times x plus 7 is equal to 6. Don't let these fractions scare you. A lot of students see equations with fractions and they freak out. Again, this is all wrapped up together, the 1 half x, so we can't do him first. We're going to get rid of the 7 by subtracting 7 from both sides. So 1 half x plus 7 will subtract 7 from the left. Whoops. And on the right hand side, it's going to be equal 
uh, 6 minus 7. So we'll subtract 7 essentially from the left and, six, and subtract 7 from the right. So on the left, all we'll have left is 1 half x, and on the right, 6 minus 7, I think you can convince yourself, is negative 1. So we have the same problem. We want to get rid of this 2 that's down here. Effectively, this is x divided by 2 is what this is, so we're going to get rid of it by multiplication. So we'll have 1 half x is equal to negative 1. We'll multiply the left by 2 and we'll multiply the right by 2. So what we have is a 2 on the bottom and the 2 on the top, which will cancel, and so all we'll have left on the left is x, and on the right, what is negative 1 times 2? It's just going to be negative 2, because negative times positive is negative, and that's the final answer. x is equal to negative 2. And if you stick negative 2 in here, then you'll have 1 half times negative 2, which is going to be negative 1. That'll give you negative 1 for this quantity, plus the 7 is going to give you a positive 6, which is correct. So everything's correct there. All right, what if you had 2x over 3 is equal to 8? All right, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but we're going to tackle it in the simplest way possible. We're going to get rid of this 3 first, and then we're going to get rid of the 2 later. Now we can do it opposite if you want. You can get rid of the 2 first and you can get rid of the 3. It's really up to you. There's no wrong answer here, but what we're going to do is do it like this. We're going to rewrite the problem. How do we get rid of the 3? It's on the bottom, so he's, he's division. He's being divided. So in order to get rid of them, we're going to do multiplication to the left and to the right. The 3 is on the top and the 3 is on the bottom, so they divide away. Basically give us 1, so they sort of disappear. All you have left is 2x is equal to, what is 8 times 3? 24. So now you have 2x is equal to 24. How do you get rid of the 2? He's multiplied, so you have to divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side by 2. So the 2 on the top and the 2 on the bottom disappear, or they divide out giving you 1. So what you end up having here is x is equal to, what is 24 divided by 2? That's 12. And that's the final answer. And again, if you take 24 and stick it in here, what is 2 times 12? I'm sorry, you take 12, stick it in here. 2 times 12 is 24. 24 divided by 3 is 8, so it, it works out. All right, our final problem of this lesson is going to be x plus 5 over 3 is equal to 7. So, same sort of thing. You can imagine an invisible parenthesis here kind of covering this, or kind of encompassing that stuff. We want to get x by himself, but we can't really dive into the top yet. Let's get rid of the 3 first. We know we can do that. Let me rewrite the problem. x plus 5 over 3 is equal to 7. How do we get rid of that 3? We multiply by 3 on the left and 3 on the right, because now we have a 3 on top and a 3 on bottom that cancel. And so on the left-hand side, all we have is x plus 5, and on the right-hand side, we have 21. So... We're at a situation where we're adding 5 on the left, so we'll get rid of him by subtracting 5 on the left and subtracting 5 on the right. So on the left, the 5 minus 5 goes away, you just have x. And on the right-hand side, 21 minus 5 is 16, positive 16. That's the answer. And if you take this and you stick the 16 in here, what's 16 plus 5 is 21, right? 21 divided by 3 gives you 7, so you've gotten the correct answer. So make sure you can solve all of these. I know sometimes in the beginning it looks like you're not going to get the hang of it because maybe it looks difficult or you're not sure you'll ever get the hang of it. But really the only way to do it or to get the hang of it is to solve a lot of problems. So that's what we're going to do. Follow me on to the next section and the next few sections. We're going to solve tons of these things. They're going to get a little bit harder, but the concept will remain exactly the same. And you need to make sure you can solve them yourself. Follow me on to each lesson as, we, as you complete each topic. And your experience and your confidence will go up every time, I promise you that. So follow me out to the next section right now.